More than 39 million people in the U.S. are age 65 or over, including 2.4 million people who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Therese Murphy with the Center is here to discuss some of the concerns and needs of the LGBT plus elders. And welcome, Therese. And yes, you know, sometimes we, we forget that whole section of the community that's 65 or older. Mm -hmm. Those folks grew up in a completely different situation. So really, you, tell us some of the differences from say 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, in the past, identifying in any way other than heterosexual, male or female, was considered something wrong with mm -hmm. the person, something that needed to be fixed, something that was unacceptable. And and so they've, they've grown up or, you know, come to adulthood in those eras, and we briefly were talking off camera about some of the situations, friends that we know that right. went through difficult times. Mm -hmm. There really was um, a social and economic kind of discrimination Absolutely. for these folks. Absolutely, what I found at the center with the group that I work with is mm -hmm. what the literature bears out, which is that today's generation of LGBT seniors have deeper struggles in three areas than their straight counterparts or mm -hmm. than we expect or hope sure. seniors who are gay will have in 20 or 30 years. And one of those is financial concerns. These people are much less likely to get hired, to mm -hmm. be fired if it was discovered that they were gay, to not be promoted or even to not seek a promotion or to go for a more lucrative profession because they didn't want to put themselves out there. And we also find that they were far less likely to be married, which results in financial concerns in their senior years. They don't sure. have the spousal benefits that a lot of us rely mm -hmm. on as a safety, safety net, such as Social Security or uh, spousal pensions. And also, if you've been paying the mortgage alone for 50 years, you're gonna have less disposable income okay. in your senior years. And this is, this is one of those things we don't really think about. You know, we may kind of get that idea of maybe job discrimination, but right. those financial discriminations and financial problems that they come to as we get to our senior years, mm -hmm. they don't have that safety net. They don't, and uh, they also don't have the kind of social supports mm -hmm. that everybody has, not all the time. They're, as I said, they're less likely to have been married. They're less likely to have had a life partner at any point. They're far less likely to have children, and they're more likely to be estranged from birth families or just not close to sisters or brothers or cousins mm -hmm. as other people. Yeah, they, and we do find that social support is the strongest indicator for both physical and mental good health. And that's it, that's why programs like the center mm -hmm. really are that, that point where, you know, elders can come to the center and, and get that positive reinforcement. Absolutely, find, find their peers, get together, form chosen families. And now are there, uh, I want to address the health disparities because of course we're, we're familiar with HIV and, and other health concerns within the, the older LGBT community. Absolutely, the three areas that I mentioned that mm -hmm. where today's gay seniors have maybe steeper struggles than their, their straight counterparts are social supports, finances, and medical things. They've experienced discrimination. They're less likely to go to the doctor, more likely to postpone it. They're not always asked the right questions to get the information needed to treat an illness mm -hmm. or injury. And again, if you have financial concerns, going to the doctor is a bigger deal. Yeah, exactly. And these are the things that, you know, we really don't think about. We don't address those items till you realize maybe you do have a relative, a friend who is going through this. So really, what kind of advice can you give these folks? Well, here's the good news. You don't have to be married to someone or to be related by blood to have family. And this is a generation of people who have been forced to form chosen families. And some of them have gotten awfully good at it. But the advice that I would really like to give is to everybody else, because we all have gay seniors in our communities. We all have mm -hmm. friends, family, maybe a coworker or a former coworker who retired. And what I would encourage people to do is to remember that their struggles may be even steeper than other seniors. Invite them over. They might appreciate the free meal as much as they <laughs> appreciate the company. And then sure. ask them 
about their stories. They have great stories to tell. This is a remarkable group of people. These are people who started the gay rights movement, who got the government to respond to the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. they, there's so much we have to learn and, and admire in this group. So I do encourage people to remember their struggle, learn a little bit about them. Absolutely. Now, Therese, I appreciate you coming in today and educating me on the concerns and issues you're seeing in the LGBT plus community. This is so important. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Carol.